good morning all and welcome to the series of webinar as you know these webinars are recurring webinars hosted by numerical analytics instrument private limited so i welcome you and today with uh, today with us uh, mr john paul raj from cathedral and john conner school so Yeah, John sir, uh, some disturbance is there from your side. I think. What is? Can you, you you can't hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but there is a background uh, voice. Oh God, is it like? What's the background voice? What can you hear? Uh, it's like hmm, kind of hum, hum, hum kind of. That's just a hum. How is it now? Is it better or is it terrible? Yeah, yeah, it's better. It's better now. Better. Yeah. Yes. It's been going on. Sorry about that. So, uh, Mr. John Paul Raj, you can continue. Uh, you can share uh, your screen. All right. <coughs> Sorry. First of all, good morning to everyone. Um, today's uh, topic. I don't know how to emphasize uh, the importance of this topic. Uh, I. Uh, what I'll do is that um, you know today we are going to talk about trig graphs and uh, uh, the webinars here. We meet. Uh, we chat. We uh, discuss for about an hour, but. Uh, this is something that I did in my class over like, I don't know, eight, 10 hours, you know, over two weeks, we spent uh, just going into the details. And I'm sure when you do it in your own schools, uh, your teachers will take uh, enough time to explain. Uh, but some of you who are uh, looking at uh, past papers, uh, I know there's one student here who's in grade 10, very faithfully coming every week. You should give a special prize for that, <laughs> for those who come regularly, okay? Every webinar, yeah, but... Right. Uh, you know, uh, what I meant uh, by the past papers, every webinar, I, uh, you know, uh, I've shared the screen, but, you know, I've got everything in detail, what I do in uh, every webinar, you know, it's all chronicled. But in every webinar, if you notice that I've looked at questions from the past papers to emphasize whatever we've done, whether we've done in functions, whether we, I don't know what that was. Uh, but in every webinar, you know that I've <clears throat> picked up questions from past papers to uh, help you see how, you know, this uh, TI Inspire can be used uh, more efficiently, more effectively. Uh, and so if you look at some of the past paper questions to see the importance of the topic, uh, you probably will see that, oh, there aren't many questions on the graphs when it comes to uh, paper four. Remember paper four and paper six are where you're allowed to use a calculator. Uh, but you need to look into the paper six. And I think uh, last week or I don't know, when was it I said something about uh, uh, you know, this particular topic. And uh, because this topic on trick graphs is something that, you know, uh, very recently I was doing in my grade nine class in my school. Uh, I don't know whether I told them that, you know, the real power, the real, uh, 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 what was the right word? The real power, the real, I don't know what the right word is. When it comes to my minor Latino, okay. Uh, the sheer extent to which trig graphs will be tested uh, is in paper six, not so much in paper four. So yes, I have seen questions on paper four on uh, as related to paper uh, as related to trig graphs, and we are only focusing on trigonometric graphs, by the way, not just you know uh, any other aspect of uh, trigonometry. So it's just a basic thing because, like I said, you know there's a lot more. Uh, but I hope at least at the end of this one hour, I can give you something that will be useful uh, from the uh, basics of it. But just to explain to you the importance and what I meant by saying in paper six and uh, you know paper six questions it'll take a longer time for us to solve uh, and someday we will do something on paper six definitely but just to get you to see what I'm talking about take a look at this this is a paper six question and you can see the graph there it is a sine curve all right and the questions are you know it's application questions but it's entirely on that application to the um, uh, trigonometric graph, you know, and it's not necessarily sign, it could be anything. <clears throat> this is, I don't know which year this was, but uh, just give, just to give you an example to help you see that it's relevant. It's another, another paper six question. Uh, there you go. This is another year, totally another year. This is talking about tides. And again, you know, uh, things that are appearing naturally, like you can see uh, what I mean by uh, the importance of studying the graph uh, and how the graph changes and how it varies. Uh, and my point before I start any topic, even in my classes, I try and see the relevance and try and let the students know that, hey, this is important. And uh, for those of you who have 
have been solving paper six questions in your school uh, or who uh, in your schools have been told about paper six you know it's a very different kind of paper uh, more applications uh, but like i said this particular topic trigonometric graphs you may not see it in paper four and then you might think that oh you don't have many questions on graphs but as I just showed you right at the start, why is it so important? Because you will see a lot more of its applications in paper six. Okay, so what we're going to do today is super important. And even when you're doing it in your class, make sure that your teacher, you know, you ask good questions. And uh, the best way uh, to understand trig graphs uh, is through, uh, you know, graphing it. And there's no better calculator than the T and Spire. Uh, my students in my grade nine are already using the CAS. But uh, there are kids in the grade 10, they are, they, they, they are using the non-CAS. It doesn't matter which one you, do, you use. But I still, even yesterday in my grade 10 class, we did a review on trig graphs because, you know, I mean, I was not, uh, I was not hoping for this topic, but somehow it just happened. It was a hot topic in my classes. So we just decided, you know, okay, let's, let's just do the same thing. And so if you were in my class, maybe, you know, you'd see that some of these questions repeated. Uh, feel free to leave. I don't know why my students come, uh, Hassan. I don't know why uh, they come. I, I tell them that I get a little nervous when I see, you know, familiar names there on the participants list. So if it seems a little bit more repetitive uh, that we've done, just feel free to say, oh, that's okay, I won't feel bad. Uh, but uh, at least for those students who are not in their schools, maybe that'll be a good thing. So in my agenda that I've chalked out for today uh, is we will take a look at how it is to be used someone wrote something in the chat is it a question hello sir yeah hi uh so all right uh if there's any question then uh hassan if you can just let me know because sometimes i look at the chat and then you know i get habituated to the pause at that point and just let me know okay uh, the first thing the first thing i wanted to know is uh, uh the sine curve uh, comes from the idea of the unit circle all right, whether it's at any trig graphs can be generated using the idea of the unit circle. And we're not going to go into the unit circle. I just wanted to clarify that. There have been too many webinars, both with TI and my own. Uh, I have uh, uh, spoken and brought about the uh, idea of how the sine curve comes into being. So in your classes, uh, in your in your schools, your teacher will tell you and will show you uh, how, you know, the, the whole thing comes about, uh, how, yeah, how the whole uh, idea of, sign curves, how they're generated, all those things will come into uh, play when you do it in your schools. Uh, having said that, uh, we'll jump straight into the sign curve and talk about, you know, what it is. And uh, the first thing I wanted to show you also is how you draw it on your, uh, on your calculator. There's something to do with the settings. So if you have your calculator, has everyone got your calculator? It'll be really, help it'll be really helpful. Uh, what I want you to do, let me just first draw it on uh, my uh, OneNote. And then what I want you to do is that use your calculator I want you to produce exactly what I draw, okay? Exactly what I draw on my OneNote, I want you to produce on your calculator. Okay, let my OneNote open up. And uh, so I'm going to go to the next page. It's going to call it characteristic of a sign curve. So let's just go to that part. So the first thing is that we want to be able to draw, okay? So the sign curve, like I said, you know, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, how uh, it is generated, meaning the unit circle part we will ignore. We'll go straight into the sine curve. Uh, <clears throat> the sine curve basically is going to look like this. Okay. And uh, when you do unit circles, you'll understand why this is 360. Because the circle has got, you know, the complete cycle is 360 degrees. <clears throat> and uh, so in one complete cycle, that means, you know, one complete circle, yeah, you will see a sine curve, all right? Also, because it's a unit circle, the radius is one, you'll know why this is a one and why this is a minus one. So, you know, that's why I said the, the ideas of the sine uh, or the cosine, they come from the unit circle. So you have to wait till your teacher does unit circle. And uh, uh, for those of you who have done this, you will know that, you know, because it's from the unit circle, that's why the maximum value, this is going to be called the maximum value, will denote it by capital M. And this is the minimum value, then small m will denote it by, okay? But <clears throat> what I'm going to ask you, first challenge is, I want you to use your calculator and I want one. I don't want many, okay? I want one sine curve, just like this. 
just like this. On your own calculator, if you can try out, I want just one. I don't want it to continue. You'll see that it will continue. I don't want it to continue here. I don't want it to continue here. Okay, is everyone understood the question? So use your calculator. I don't want what I did in dotted line. I don't want that. I just want one, one. Okay, so that will help us understand and uh, uh, understand what the sine curve is all about. So I don't want the dotted ones. I just want one unique, complete sine curve. Go for it. Give you about two minutes, two, three, whatever. One complete sine curve. This is the time, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? Hassan, this is the time you put that suspense music. You know, when you have to yeah. a quiz, you have this music going on in the background. I love it, you know. Uh, but, you know, when students are doing, I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> I hope you guys are trying. I'm going to give you because, you know, I don't know. I can't see your faces, what you're doing. So I'll give you some time. And after that, I'm going to show you because that's the first thing I want. And students should know because if there is a problem, this is the time you should ask a question. Okay. I am not getting it or what are you already getting? That's why I showed you. I sketched it. I said, this is what I want. So try it on your calculator and tell me you see or you don't see or what you see or what you don't see. You put it in the chat if you're too shy to speak. In my mind, I'm imagining that suspense music, actually. Some of those kids from that school are not here. I'm just looking at the list. Abhir, is it? that? Yes, A lot of new names are there. I can't even relate to some of these names. Yeah. Okay, I am not getting any feedback. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, right? So that's the first thing that I wanted how to draw a sine curve. And the, the main thing is the settings on your calculator. The main thing is <clears throat> how you set uh, the calculator. Uh, what should I use? I'll use the CAS, all right? I'll use the CAS. My students use the CAS. I'm going to use the I've got both open actually, the CAS and the non-CAS. Uh, let me see what uh, comes up and uh, this is something that I'd created for my class, uh, Hassan. This I'll share with you. It's not perfect right now, okay? But it's great. I gave it to them to just, uh, but I will perf uh, I'll, I'll perfect it and I'll make uh, some kind of a sheet that goes along just so that they can explore. I give it. To, I just made it for my class actually. But this is what I was talking about. It, 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 it's really helpful to see the, the different uh, ABCD, all right? So for those of you here, if you like to play with it, I'll give me some time. I'll, I'll perfect it. I'll make it much better and then I'll give it to you, okay? But for my kids, I'd give it, for my students, I'd give it to them. Uh, <clears throat> so let's just look at the uh, uh, settings, okay? The first thing that we, we'd like to see, um, if you were trying on your calculator, if you're trying on your calculator, you'd have seen a problem. If you directly went on to enter the function, the problem you'd have seen is that you'd have probably, it, it might have looked like a straight line, okay? So if you went to sign and you just entered sign X, and you just had entered, uh, you know, it would have looked, looked like that. And you'd say, you'd say, what on earth is that? Uh, Mr. Paul Raj drew something else and I'm getting something else. And that's why I said it's got to do with the settings. And that is why that is the first thing I like students to understand that, you know, let's tackle the settings first and you'll get it exactly as we want. Okay. So let me just hit undo. And uh, all right. Is it going to undo or not? Yeah, there you go. Cleaned the screen. All right. The first thing when you do a graph, uh, I get... It should be in radians. I'd like to be it in degrees. In the IGCC International Mathematical Curriculum, it should be in degrees. I know Mr. Patil, is it a teacher? Uh, uh, in the IGCC International Mathematics Curriculum, they have it in degrees, so we'll keep it in degrees, okay? Uh, and uh, in the IB, in the additional math uh, programs, they will play around with radians. Uh, but with degrees, we'll do it. With degrees, we'll do it. We'll take a look at the window settings, okay? Uh, so the answer is not wrong, Mr. Patel. Uh, yes, in radians, it'll switch right right away. But we'll do the same thing with degrees because in the IGCC curriculum, you are required, uh, for the international math uh, at least, uh, you are required to do only follow with degrees. So it's keeping to degrees. <clears throat> we'll take a look at the other settings. So let's go with the settings first before we put it in. So the window settings, uh, for those of you who are looking at it for the first time, follow along with what I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to uh, window zoom. I'm going to the window settings. In the window settings, the window settings, 
let's follow with what I'm doing. And uh, I will still keep it as negative 360. You could have done it from zero, but I'll keep it at, so that we can see that there's just one. There's nothing before that zero. Okay. So let's keep it from negative 360 to 360. Okay. So that's giving me the entire values of X, the domain for that sign. All right. Then the scale, I'm going to keep it at 30 degrees. I've kept it to 30 degrees, it's in degrees, so it's 30 degrees, okay? The minimum and maximum value for uh, for the Y, in the Y axis, let's just, let's just keep it negative two. We can change that later on when we play around with it, okay? So this is where the settings are, okay? The window settings. So for those of you who are following along, you need to keep this in mind before you're doing your sine or cosine or whatever that is. And the Y scale, let's keep it as one, okay? And then when you hit uh, tab to go to the next field, you can say, okay, now your calculator is set. Now enter sign. Now do that what you had, okay? So when you put FX, now go and say trig sine X, voila! Just like that. What we saw is a straight line. Suddenly, it seems that it's not a straight line. It's still in degrees, by the way. We didn't switch it to the radians. But what's the problem? We're seeing two, no? We're seeing two. I want one. I want the domain to be restricted. I want, even though, see, actually, the window is three, even if you go on the left hand side of negative, you'll see the sign continues. If you go on the right hand side of 360, you'll see the sign continues. Okay, you want to restrict the domain. You want to restrict the values of X. What do I mean by restricting the domain? You want to restrict the values of X for which the graph has been sketched. So we are going to say, I don't want X values. I want X values from zero and not above 360. I want the values of X from zero to 360 alone, nothing beyond 360. So you go back to the entry, you can either hit double click or you can go and tab, you can double click this entry and it'll give you back that thing. Now you put the condition. You know, we've seen this condition lines before, how to use the condition line. The condition line is there if you hit control equal to. All conditions are there. If you go control equal to, you'll see several, several conditions. You'll see greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, so on and so forth. But that condition line is this one which restricts the domain. Restricting the domain, for those of you not done functions, my ninth grade has not done functions. 10th grade, of course, we've completed. So that means you're restricting the values of X, the input values, okay? That's mean, meant by restricting the domain. So that symbol, if you put it after that definition, and there you say, what are the values of X you want? I said, I want the values of X between zero and 360, nothing more than that. So put that, you say, okay, zero, less than or equal to, X, again, let's say less than or equal to 360. Plus, that's it. Hit enter, voila, just like that. So all that thing that was there is gone. And guess what? If I even shift the graph a little bit on the right, ooh, okay, you know what I'm trying to do, right? See, if I bring it here, are baba. All right, let's just change the zoom to, you know, settings to include something on the right inside of 360. So let's make that uh, let's make it 500. Okay, X scale, let's bring it down to 30. Okay, ka hai. Ah. All right, can you see that? On the right hand side also it's cut. That means it is plotting one single sine wave, one single. You can do the same thing for cosine, all right? So it's in the window settings that you need to try and uh, keep it between those values, keep it to, I mean, 30 or 45 or whatever you please, the scale. It doesn't mean that you have to change the radians. That will also do it. Yes, that's not wrong. But uh, since the IGCC curriculum requires that you play with the uh, degrees, that is one complete sine wave. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. All right. The second thing is everyone got it. Everyone got it. Please try it on your own calculators. Okay. Don't just, uh, I'm sure they'll send the recording to you. Uh, but uh, that's the first thing on how to get the one complete sine wave. That means you can restrict the values of the entry. Okay. That means you're telling the calculator, just plot between zero and 360 and then you don't get anything more than that. Although there is more than that, it's called a periodic wave, means it continues in the same fashion, continues in the same style. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my OneNote now. And uh, here, let's talk about the characteristics. Characteristics. What are the characteristics? The first thing I said was this value the maximum value for the sine wave is one. The minimum value for the sine wave is negative one. This is the parent function, okay? The parent, we say y is equal to sine of x. The parent, the parent can be transformed. You can check out its transformation. And that is what the main problem is in the paper six questions I said, the transformations. That's where it gets a little challenging 
so to say, right? And that's the main part of the question. But we learn about how did you, how do we get the recording? Um, Hassan? Hassan, somebody's asked about the recording. Oh, you already answered that? We will share. Okay, they will share the recording later on. That's okay. I mean, <clears throat> okay. Why is equal to sine x is the original parent sign and the capital M and the small m refer to the maximum value and the minimum value, all right? Now, certain things, let's just uh, call them the characteristics, okay? What do they mean by, or what each one means? Again, okay? we're going to give it certain letters, okay? Standard letters. Uh, this distance from what's called the central line, I'm going to call this the central line. The X axis, I'm going to call the central line. It's not me calling it the central line. It is, that is what it's called. The central line is the X axis. X axis, the equation of the central line is y is equal to zero. That's the x axis. Central line. This thing, this I've drawn from the central line to m, it refers to what we call the amplitude, often denoted as a. The amplitude can be computed by the formula m minus m over 2. Now, if you understand what is m and small m, it's the maximum value minus the minimum value. The whole thing divided by two. The maximum value minus the minimum value, the whole thing divided by two. So if the maximum value here was one and the minimum value was a negative one, you'd get that as one minus a minus one over two. And that should be just one. That's the amplitude of a sine wave. If the same the same thing can be interpreted for cosine, okay? We are just going to look at sine for want of time. The second thing I want to, to look at is something called that central line. That central line, equation of the central line in this case is y is equal to zero. The central line, we are going to denote it by a letter D. And using the same capital M and small m, you can find the value of D by adding the two. Capital M, small m divided by two will give you D. So in this case, capital M is one. Let's write it as max plus min over two. Okay, so in this case, the maximum was one, the minimum was my, uh, minus one, and that should give you zero. So D is zero, should mean the equation of the central line would be y is equal to zero. D gives us the central line. A gives us the amplitude. Okay, <clears throat> A gives us the amplitude, D gives us the central line. All right, now in general, a uh, sine is written as, a function is written like this, sine of b x minus c plus d. In general, this is how you're going to see a sine. This is the general form, whether it's sine or whether it's cosine. This is what we see in general. So we already saw what is that a and what is that d. The biggest challenge, of course, is to figure out what is that b and what is that c. All right, and therefore, that's why we have that exploration uh, thing that we'll take a look at for the B and the C especially. But A and D, I hope that is clear. A and D just comes from the maximum and the minimum value. All right, B and C, we need to just see what it is, okay? Now, let me first define what the B and C are. So I'm going to write down each of them down together. A is the amplitude. D gives us what we call the central line or the vertical shift. also gives us the equation of central line. And by the way, that central line, that idea of the central line is important, okay? And all these things, by the way, boys and girls, whoever's here, remember you need to try and do these things even without the calculator sometimes, okay? Uh, the calculator you can use to check your answers. A and D. The B refers to what we call the frequency or the number of sine waves. Frequency, this is a term, it's a more physics term, okay? So we can just say it's related to period. Related to period. Now, what are these words? Frequency, period, you know, new, new words I'm using. So let's write down what period means. Period is the time, sometimes in degrees. So I'm just going to write down degrees. Period, sometimes in degrees, I mean, time can be, you know, in any form also. So period is the time in degrees for one complete sine curve or wave, okay? 
I'm going to write curve because you know, in physics you'll use the word wave. One complete. It's time for one complete. That's period. Period is denoted by the letter T. Okay, it's not B. It's written, denoted by T. T is period. So if you look at our original parent function, if, I, if you look at what I drew, I said one complete. That's one complete. It has this part is called the crest and this part is called the trough. Okay, so one complete is, means one crest and one trough. One crest and one trough is one complete sine wave. The time taken is 360 degrees. I spoke about it earlier. So the time taken and the period of the original or the parent sine function is 360 degrees. All right. So you got to check. Okay. So let's, let's, let's give an example. If I have, you know, that was a parent. If I just say, you know, something like this, this one. And if I just write down 12, what's the period? Anyone? What is the period? For what I drew, one complete, the period is B12. Let's draw another example. If I do something and I call this 22, what's the period? The period is 22. What does it mean? It contains one complete sine wave, one complete sine wave, one crest, one trough. So period means the time taken for one complete sine wave. All right. That's period. That's not B, 22. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's not the period. Uh, sorry, that's not the B. How is period and B related? The number of waves, okay, uh, the frequency. B is equal to 360 degrees divided by the T. B is equal to the 360, because 360 is one complete sine wave in the parent function, 360 divided by T. So for this example that I have here, for this one, the B would be 360 over 12. For this particular example that I have here, the B would be 360 over 22. You leave it as a fraction. Don't worry about uh, the decimals right now. Leave it as a fraction. Okay. So B is what we call the frequency or the number of sine waves. Number, how many sine waves are you going to see? All right. The parent function of sine says that's one complete in 360 degrees. So there's a relationship between period and B saying, you know what? B is 360 over T. Okay. So that takes care of A, B, and D. Now, C. C is called phase shift. Now, this is probably the, the most interesting part, I think. And I, at least I believe, you know, phase shift. Phase shift is horizontal shift. So if D is vertical shift, phase shift is horizontal shift. And you know why I find it interesting? Using phase shift, using phase shift, you can write sine as cosine and vice versa. That's the, that's the challenge. That is the challenge. And that's what we were doing in my grade 10 class yesterday. How do you write sine in terms of cosine? How do you write cosine in terms of sine? It all is about playing with that C, phase shift. The rest remains the same. So this is all theory. Let's just put it into practice. So for that, let's take a look at my T-inspired little app that, uh, not app actually, a little file that I had created. Uh, let me go back to that thing. And here's the original one parent sign view. Okay. Let's go back to this one thing that I'd created. Okay. What do we see here is are three different things. Okay. Uh, and this is just to demonstrate C, by the way, I talked about that uh, phase shift, all right? The green is cosine. The green is cosine. Okay. As you can see, the green is cosine. And the red is sine. Everyone okay? The red is sine. The green is cosine. There's a dotted, there's a dotted graph, blue. And that, as you can see, is sine x minus c. That's the form, okay? That's the general form. Like I wrote, if you recall, I wrote x minus c. So in this case, I've assumed a is 1, b is also 1, and d is 0. Okay? So that's where it rests. So if you know, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, let me just go back to my one note. Remember, I wrote this expression here, a sine b x minus c, that x minus c is in the bracket, okay? So that's the c we are talking of phase shift. So in the t i inspire right now, I've taken a as 1, b is also 1, d is 0. So we're just looking at how is the c changing? And remember what I said, c can be used to write from sine to cosine and cosine to sine. You can, you know, go both ways, okay? 
And that's that's the biggest challenge in these paper six kind of questions. And therefore, it's important to understand what, what's going on with that. All right. So that dotted graph is, I've written it as X minus C and I've created a slider. You know, maybe some other day we can talk about how to create sliders using the TI Inspire. Maybe some of you already know. That's great. But it's a good way to explore. Okay. The sliders is a nice unique feature in the TI Inspire. You can use that to, you know, to shift and change values almost almost like a variable within a variable, all right? So X is the variable, but you can create another one to make the graph move around according to that C or B or however many sliders you want, okay? So there again, let's look at green graph is cosine, red graph is sine. Now what's the difference between the green graph and the red graph? The green graph starts, you know, if you look at the one complete, it starts at the maximum value on the X, Y axis. The red graph, the sine graph starts at zero. It starts at the central axis, at the central line. Starts on the central line, if you were to say, on the central line. That's the starting point. This one starts here at the maximum value. That's one of the differences, okay? Now, let's pay attention to the dotted graph, the blue. The C, right now, as you can see in the slide, is zero. When C is zero, it's just sine x. It's on that. Now, let's just move it. So, when I have C is equal to 15, can you see it moved up? It moved up, it moved up, but remember, sign is on the x-axis it starts. This is starting here now. Sign should start here. It's starting here now. But it's still not cos because, you know, you said cos should start here. It's still not cos. Cos is here. It's still not maximum. Okay? So you can use the slider to actually check when will it become sign again or when does it become cosine? When does it, when does it sit on the green graph? When does it sit on the green graph and when does it sit on the red graph? That's that's the trick. And that's that's what I mean by saying that, you know, C helps us visualize that a sine graph, now it's sine, the blue dotted blues on the red graph, that's sine, it belongs to sine. But if I move it enough number of times, can you see that I'm moving it enough number of times? Whoa, it became a cos. How much did I move to the right? I moved to 70. I moved to 70. It's still written as sine, sine x minus c is 70, but it's become cos. Can you see that, everyone? So originally, when c was zero, let's go back, backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. There you go, that was sine. c is equal to zero, that's sine. But the more I move up, 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 coming down to that, there you go, c is equal to 270, it's become cosine. That's a huge thing. And that is what I was talking about. All right, so let me go back to my one note and write it down that that C actually helps in shifting. It actually helps in shifting. What we actually saw was sine of X minus 270 is actually the same thing as a cosine graph. Sine of X minus 270 is the same thing as the cosine graph. I mean, it's, it's one thing to see that sign, you know, that, that C basically shifts things to the right and to the left. But it's another thing to see that how the sign can be written as cosine and how the cosine can be written as a sign. My one note is not showing uh, what I've written. I don't know. It's not uh, refreshing, but I actually wrote sine of 270, uh, X minus 270 is equal to uh, cosine. I hope that was clear uh, with, uh, yeah, it's slowly appearing. 27 has appeared. I don't know, maybe it's the internet that's a little too slow. But so, for, oh yeah, there you go, it's appeared now. So, I hope that is clear how you were able to visualize it. This, what I, what, what I wanted to say, that the C is not only the horizontal shift, but you can also write sine as cosine and cosine as sine. If you, if you, if you correctly man manipulate the terms. All right? Okay, one more thing and then we will take a look at one question. One more thing, okay? Now, a negative SIG and sine, okay? So if I have y is equal to sine x was my parent, if y is equal to sine x was my parent, then negative sine, y is equal to negative sine, okay? Negative sine. This negative sine basically is a reflection about x-axis. And the same thing for cosine, okay? So if your y is equal to negative cosine, okay, it basically is a reflection about the x-axis. This negative sign in front of it will just make it a reflected thing about the x-axis. All right? It's just a reflection. 
also another thing sine of a negative angle is a negative of sine x now this is something that you like i said you'll have to wait in your class for your teacher to tell you and cosine of a negative angle is just cos of x we just i, I just thought i'll throw it in there before you look at some questions so sine of a negative angle is just negative sine of x that's the property of uh, odd functions and this is the property of even functions okay let's get back to our uh, t n spiral okay let's get back to our t n spiral let's look at that blue dotted graph again okay c was initially zero so let's bring it back to the initial graph there you go initial look at c going up going up going up going up and it's almost approaching the minimum value of negative one here and when it comes there to 90 it's there now look at the dotted blue graph and look at the green graph look at the dotted blue graph and look at the green graph it's a reflection and the blue graph is a reflection of the green graph can you see about x-axis the green graph is the original cosine graph and the blue graph is a reflection about the x-axis of the green graph the blue graph is the sine with c is equal to 90. blue graph is sine with c is equal to 90. the green graph remember it's, it's a reflection i said about the x-axis okay what does that mean it means that when c is equal to 90 so let's put that thing down also what we observed that when c is equal to 90 that means when sine of x minus 90 c is equal to 90 is the same thing as a negative cosine of x the negative meaning it's a reflected cosine graph a reflected cosine graph oh that's a lot that's a lot i've spoken so let's, let's take a look at some one or two questions and then let's you know play accordingly with what we've done but let me quickly repeat okay we looked at the characteristics of sine graph that is the main thing that's how we that's what we need to know how to play this game all right first identify m the maximum value and the minimum value your calculator can do that by the way if it is on the calculator but if it's given on the paper then you have to count the points and all that okay and the central line and the a can be calculated using the maximum and the minimum okay m minus m over 2 will give you a m plus m over 2 will give you d identify that and then look for the number of number of complete sine waves which means actually you have to look at the period you know what when is complete period and i gave you the trick how to find b using the period and then c well that's the challenge for today how to identify c so let's take a look at a question directly okay i did this question in my class yesterday so bear with me those who've seen it okay this is one question given to you all right and don't worry about what's given you a sign let's take a look at this question first thing okay let's say the question was right on the equation just looking at the uh, graph right down the equation that is our challenge write down the equation that means write down what's a b c d and our challenge will be i want you to write it in both sine and cosine and we'll check it with the calculator we'll check it with the calculator so first thing you will observe is they have given us the graph from 360 negative 360 to 360 okay and if you all can see it clearly if you can't see let me know i'll zoom in a little bit more first thing i want you to find out is that a b and c and d a b c and d that's what we want to find out and then we can write the equation right using those a b and c and d <clears throat> to find a and d what did i say i said identify the maximum value and the minimum value identify the maximum value and the minimum value capital m for maximum six small m for minimum negative six so my a should be <clears throat> six minus six over two six minus of a minus six over two that should give me actually six you know six plus six would be 12 12 over two should be six the value of a is six the value of d on the other hand is there a question i see something on the chat write your answer in chat okay i thought that was something for me d on the other hand is six plus a minus six over two and that should be zero so there you go you got your uh, amplitude as a and you got your center line this gives you as a center line remember y is equal to zero now what i like to do is i first tell the students you know draw that center line in this case the center line y equal to zero is just like that just like that there it is that's the x-axis it is the same draw that 
And then I ask my students, now you look for your sine wave. All right, let's look at B also first. Okay, so A and D are done. Let's look at B. How many sine waves do we see? This is one. And there's another one. Two. Two complete sine waves. But it's from negative 360 to 360. Remember, we want it from 0 to 360. From negative 360 to 360, we have two, which ranges from 0 to 360. How many do we have? It's just one. So B also must be equal to one. So what do we have? If we were to write it as sine, if the equation were to be written as sine, we write it as A is six sine of, I don't know what the rest of it is inside. B is one, so we can write it as one here. D is zero. And so I just left it as a gap because we want to know what that C is. We need to find out what that C is. Okay? We want to, want to find out what that C is. Let's look at a graph. Sine. Sine. The shape of sine, as I said, should start from the center line. There, it starts from the origin. That's the shape of sine. It starts there. And I tell my students, you know, draw a line there where it meets the center line. And see where that's shifted. C is C means shifted, no? C first shift. Has this sine wave shifted? There is no shift. There is no horizontal shift. So the value of C also must be zero. The value of C also, there's no horizontal shift. So the value of C is also zero. Okay? So I can write it as x minus zero which means our graph is y is equal to 6 sine x. That's it. You don't even have to write down 0 plus 0 or something. That is our answer. But let's take it a bit further. Let's push it. How do I write this same thing as a negative sign? I want to write the same thing. I want the same graph with a reflected sign. A reflected sign. The same graph with a reflected sign. Let's start with that. That would be the challenge. How do we write it with a reflective sign? Okay, we have already found we have already found A and D. That should be the same. But look at the graph and look at the same technique. Where is the reflected sign graph starting from? The reflected reflection of the x-axis. The reflected graph. Anyone? It's starting here. Can you see that? That's the reflected sine graph. That's the reflected sine graph. So I'm going to erase this right part, okay? That's the reflected. And if you were to draw that line as I drew that green line, there is no shift. There is no shift. There is no shift. So you could have written the same thing as negative six sine. Um, sine x, yeah, there's no C and there's no D. There is no shift on the uh, horizontally also. You could have written the same thing like that. On the other hand, if you were to write the same graph in terms of cosine, let's look for the cosine shape on that same graph. In terms of cosine, okay, the same graph you're writing in terms of cosine. Where does the cosine graph start from? The cosine shape, as I said, starts from here, from the maximum value. That's where the cosine shape starts from. That's where the cosine shape starts from. Now let's draw a dry line there. And then find out what, how much has it shifted. That's what we mean by a shift, okay? If you were wondering what are we looking at, what is he talking about shift? That's the shift. Cosine starts from there. That's the shift. How much has it shifted from here? That's 60, so that should be 30, 30, 60, 90. It's shifted by 90. And then the cosine starts. So the graph is actually... 6 cosine x minus 90 and there's no d and that would be the same graph y is equal to 6 cos x minus 90 and there's no vertical shift let's just check now let's just check whether they're the same graphs because if they're the same graph then they have to match they have to be identical they need to be on top of each other right so let's just check 6 cos uh, x minus 90 and 6 sine x Let's just check those two, okay? And then we'll give one more question and, you know, then that'll be good for today, I guess, okay? So let's just go to that. And do I have another page here? I drew something here. Let me put in another problem. 
uh, and I will quickly arrange the window settings. Quickly arrange the window settings as it was given in the question, negative 360, 360, and let's make that 30, and let's make this negative 2, 2, and let's make that 1, and there you go, we got that thing. And I'm going to write down 6 sine x, 6 sine x. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, then it has to go from 6. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Window settings. And uh, let's make it from negative, uh, not the x values, but the sign uh, y values, sorry. Y values, let's make it from negative 7 to 7, okay, so that we can see. That's good. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Okay, there you go. Now you can see it nice and clear. All right, we said the second answer we got in terms of cosine was uh, 6 cos of, so going back to cos now, x minus 90 and there you can see that it matches exactly as we wanted exactly on if it was it's the same graph it's just a phase shift and that is what i will try to demonstrate the c basically tells you that you can write it in both ways either in terms of sine or in terms of cosine at the end of the session okay fine i was just reading the charts otherwise okay let me put one more question one more question and then i can you know uh, allow you guys to play around with your own calculator. Try it on your own calculator, okay? I mean, try it uh, to check, and then uh, let me just pull out one question first. Uh, where is that question? Uh, yeah, let me just use this question. Here we go. I, again, I did this in my grade 10 classes today. There you go. Nice looking question. Take a look at that and let's write down in the same way the equation, both in terms of sine and cosine. Let's use the same strategy that I had. Again, can you see that it's from negative 360 to 360 and uh, you want to find out A, B, C, D. Use the same strategy, okay? Try and use the same strategy. Check for maxima, the minimum value. The maximum value in this case, capital M, you can write out a six. Minimum in this case is negative two. Be careful so that the value of a is six minus minus two. Remember that's minus, okay? And the d should be just six plus or minus two. So that's eight over two, that should be four, and the d should be four over two is a two. The d gives us the center line, that's y is equal to two, center line. Okay, don't forget that. And the first thing I always tell my students is, draw the center line, draw the center line. If it's y is equal to two, draw the center line at y equals two. So you need to draw the center line, okay? I'll use another color. Draw the center line. There we go. There we go. That's the center line. Okay? So we got A and D and the center line in place. Now, what do we do? Now let's find out B. B is the number of waves. Remember, we can see one complete wave. If you look at the sign, the sign should start here. Remember, I always say sign starts at the center line. That's the shape of sign. Okay. So I'll just highlight that. That's the shape of sign. Sign starts there on the center line. Okay. Uh, if you look at it, it looks like just one complete. So this piece is here and the second piece on the other side is here. Okay. That's just piece two. That's the first part, the second part. So it's just one, but it's one complete sine wave from negative 360 to 360. That means in one cycle of 360 degrees, B, there's only half, okay? So B is half because there's one complete wave from negative 360 to 360. That means from, you know, you'll have only half of it from zero to 360. And now to find the phase shift, you know, since we already started for sine, let's do for sine first. You mark where sine is starting and there you draw that line to hit the center line. How much has it shifted and where has it shifted? It has shifted to the left. And whenever it's on the left, you have to be careful how you mark the C. It shifted to the left by 90. Can you see that? It's 30, 60, and 90. Shifted to the left by 90. So the value of C is actually negative 90. Be careful how you're entering that value C. Negative 90 on the left-hand side, negative, negative 90. So you have A, B, C, and D. Now it's just about putting it together. So in terms of sign, we have four sine, the value of B is half, 
x minus c x minus c don't forget that it's an x minus c plus a d so your equation should be 4 sine half x plus 90 plus 2 that should be your equation well it's not over because we want to write it in terms of costs the same thing the cost remember what i said where you first mark where the cost is starting cost is starting at the maximum value Cost starts at the maximum value. Okay? At that maximum value, draw that line. And then find out how much has it shifted from the y-axis. How much has it shifted from the y-axis? It's shifted to the right. Cost has shifted to the right by how much? 30, 60, and it's 90. And my line, my vertical line is a little, a little not too correct. That's my vertical line. Are you? That's mine. Shift it to the right by 90. So C is 90 and the same thing for everything should be. So it should be again 4 cosine half x minus 90. The plus 2 remains as it is. So as I said, the C only takes care of phase shift. But the phase shift is not just going uh, horizontally but it also helps to identify what the graph is in terms of sine and cosine let's check it again let's check these two graphs again are they the same okay let's get back to our calculator and i'll just enter that so that can be the final verification using the calculator so i had the sine graph as uh, four sine half i'm just going to make the changes here as you can see you can do that nicely here four sine and i'm going to enter uh, half here i'm going to use the template for the division there you go I'm going to add a half uh, and then I'm putting another bracket here and I'm going to say x, uh, what is it, plus 90 and then outside the bracket I'm going to put plus 2, okay? And there we go. That was our original graph. And then let's change the uh, sine, uh, cosine graph also that we make it 4 and let's do the same thing here. We go and enter that sign two sorry two and let's put on the bracket here it's x minus 90 as we want and let's just put a plus two and there you go matches that means what we have said today about a b and c and d the c basically using to you know shifting and writing sign in terms of cosine does hold true now i have I have created this thing, you know, uh, I, sh I showed you only with C. Just to explain C, I showed that. But in the next part of it, I have actually combined B and C. I've combined B and C. You can see that, okay? So that's taking the C on the right-hand side, but the B, you can see that the number of waves are increasing. The number of waves are increasing. The number of waves are increasing, okay? Uh, uh, this part of using the um, slider to explore and understand uh, I think it's one of the features of the TI Inspire and, uh, uh, you know, to create these sliders and to create some uh, exploration. Uh, I think students, when you're doing your uh, paper six, as I started off saying that when you are actually, you, know, you will see the power, you will see the power of uh, um, the trig graphs, questions on trig graphs only in uh, paper six. As you can see that only in paper six, you'll see that. And so I think those features of, you know, how to shift that, you know, what is happening, the number of waves is happening here. There's a shift here, it's going down. Can you see that the graph has gone down? All right, uh, you'll see it only in questions like paper six. So I think this topic of uh, trig functions is a fairly important topic, but also it's not the topic, but also how to use the calculator. How do you get one graph? You know, we started with that. Let's just quickly recap that. We started by saying, how do you get just one single sign graph? What do we do? We control the domain. Oh, what am I sharing? Not this thing. One sec, sorry. Go back to that agenda page. We started our topic today by saying, okay, how do we get one graph, one single sign graph? We control the domain, okay? And also, remember the settings? Okay, it's even in degrees, keeping in degrees, the window settings, if you just keep an eye on the window settings and, you know, uh, that will help you in getting, you know, whether it's one graph or two graphs, depending upon your paper six, whether it's like it, what it says, all right? Also, the idea of sliders, maybe one of these days, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, Hassan, you know, let's have a session only on sliders because, you know, this in the paper six, uh, I know next week we need to do something else. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know if you want to continue something on this or maybe even extend on the idea of 
a paper six solving a paper six question just so that you know the students will find that it will helpful also some of them have exams coming up in you know the next couple of months so maybe it'll also help to do something on paper six and to you know this idea of sliders because they themselves can do that in their own investigation in their own exploring so characteristics of sine wave was the next thing that we saw i explained a b c d in great detail i explained to you with you know how to calculate that i gave the meanings for it and c was the biggest challenge how to play with c how to uh, because you know the questions will be how do you write it in terms of cosine and uh, some of these things will come into your theory where your teacher will teach you about you know the odd function and the even function uh, and that's going to be the challenge i think i'm going to stop there and I'm, I'm just going to give it some time for questions if you have any questions i'll take it that we will have a quiz now oh, just a sec yeah uh, will we have a quiz now is that question oh is that a question all right uh, i'm asking about uh, any questions regarding what we spoke about okay how do you get the information for the next session uh meaning uh, what information timing or we will what is the information they're looking for the timing or what the topic is next yeah, webinar yeah next webinar so we will mail you about the next webinar no mm. issues okay yeah any questions about the topic that or what was discussed whether it's about the calculator that you know what are the features we spoke about the window settings the abcd or about a paper six question you know i mean i think uh, if they're interested in uh, hasan can they write to you and say hey can we have this a little bit more review on this topic or can they suggest topics also yeah they can yeah so feel free boys and girls if you're attending if there's something that you would like because you know we we brainstorm and we come up with ideas and saying okay what could help be helpful to you but if you want some help whether it's calculator settings whether it's window settings whether it's about you know something that you find uh you know that will be helpful for your own exam review do let us know or do you know do write to hasan and you know, and and definitely we can incorporate that any questions boys and girls come on i don't like people being so quiet all the time so if anyone have any question they can raise their hand we will unmute them raise your hand unless and only eating food <laughs> yes yeah, somebody is there q and a is some question there is there an easier way to learn how to get the window settings is there an easier way um I mean, there are some Zoom settings that are presets. Okay, there is a there is a Zoom setting for uh, like uh, let one, let me just show you that quickly. Uh, anonymous attendee, I think anonymous attendee. I told you last time also. If you ask a question anonymously, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> But uh, I'll be nice to you. Um, so yeah, there are some presets on the Windows Zoom. Yeah, I think that's when there's a Zoom standard. This is a Zoom quadrant, you know. But I think uh, uh, this Zoom data, if you're doing with the uh, data plot, Zoom fit is there. Uh, there's also Zoom trig. Can you see that? So if it's a trig oriented graph, you can even use that. You could try these things. So if that's what you mean by uh, easier, I mean something that's easy for you may not be easy for me. Something that's easy for me may not be easy. I like uh, customized, you know. I like to do it myself, you know. But sometimes when I'm in, you know, I I try all these things. I think one day I even did the zoom uh, decimal. But you could try the zoom trick because we're talking about a trick graph. You could even try that, okay. Uh, but these are some options I can think of making it uh, easy. Don't go in for the zoom in and zoom out, okay? People just jump in and they don't know what they're doing. But these are some good presets. You can you can use that as a starting point. But then if you want to tweak it yourself, you want to you want to personally do it. Uh, it Once you know what you're doing, it is easy, right? Because this is a preset. It's not your. It's not user defined as such. I hope that helps. Okay, Mr. Anonymous, Miss Anonymous, who are whoever you are. Any other questions, boys and girls? If not. Thank you so much. I don't know, you know, Hasan. To be very honest, yeah. when people don't ask questions, yeah. I don't know. बात समझ में आया या नहीं आया कि सर के ऊपर से चला गया, and it becomes very difficult. Okay, so that is why I encourage even in my class, especially yeah, when it goes one online. More, sir, I think one more. Oh, there is one question. Okay, uh, when we type the window setting, how to identify what to type? Um, keep an eye on the graph uh, window that is given to you on the calculator. So what did I do? Let me go back to. 
my question to show help you see that okay so uh okay i'll show you from this worksheet that i had okay see uh, this is the question that is given right this is from that igcc question paper okay so can you see what the x values are it's going from 0 to 24 can you see that anonymous what shall we call you anonymous annu a a can you see that that gives you the clue that you know keep the x value a little before this a little after that so that you know you're on the safe zone so x values can be from negative 1 to 20 5, 26. Y values need not go from negative 5. It can start from negative 1 and it need not cross 10. It can be going up to 5. So look at the grid in the question and that should give you the hint as what the X min and what the Y min should be. And you can see the divisions here. You know? It goes from 1, 2, 3. So that should be the scale. X scale is 1, 2, 3 and Y scale is half. Can you see that's 0.5 divisions? So that can help you, right? My good friend, Anonymous. Ha, ne, kuch to bolo. Yes, no, do you understand what I said? Did, did it make sense? Did it help? Did it answer your question? Maybe that is also Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 want, I want to be sure that I've, you know, helped them. I mean, It would be goal. good if you write your name. That yeah. is always good. That is always good. But then, even then, you know, for whatever reason, uh, no, someone doesn't. Yeah. Uh, any other question, anyone? Is there any question, anyone? Vyom, it, 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 prob it probably is a very new idea and maybe, yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you for your no, uh, response. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Vyom, any question? Vyom, girl? Was Vyom that? I can't remember. That name sounds a little familiar. Did he yeah. come? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sounds he, he's here. Yes. All right. Okay. Any any other questions? You know, it's a new, it, maybe it's a new topic and maybe this ABCD was not done before, but boys and girls, I don't know how to emphasize. This is super important as far as paper six is concerned. I gave you examples from paper six questions, okay? I was not just making up things. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's important. So I think uh, there yes. is no more question. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. Thank you so much, Thank Hassan. You, and uh, over to you. You can continue with your quiz. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you sure, for the wonderful sure. session. Sure, so sure, sure. now we can continue with the quiz. So I want all of you to go to joinmyquiz.com as we already have done this activity and enter the code 667288. Go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the code 667288. So I'll be waiting for the participants to join. Yeah, I can see the participants are coming now. So if you have any problem while joining the quiz, just write it on the chat. Okay, is there anyone who has left or that we can start? Yeah, they are still coming. So I think we, I am going to start the quiz. 
so now quiz has been started so let me just good so the next question good i think everybody knows this you can use your calculator easy one good that's a easy one oh so john paul has already told you about this the maximum and a minimum half the distance between them is the amplitude i want everyone to answer the answer this question correct
Oh, good, good. Easy one, ten seconds. Oops, time's up. Gone. Let's see how many of you have given the right answer. Oh, it's a tie, four four. So you can use your calculator to to see what's the graph of ten x. So what is the period of the function? There is a graph for you. Don't just guess. Kindly use your uh, calculator or calculation to find the uh, period of this function. You still have time. Use your calculation. See the graph. Answer the question. Ten seconds. Now you can guess. No, time's up. Oh, three right answers. So the period is pi. Okay, you can see that after. pi it's repeating itself so period is after how much uh, time or interval the graphs repeat itself now another question on the period you can you can draw this graph and you can see
Time's up. So it's pi by four. So how you go? Uh, how you find the period of any trigonometric function? You just need to divide this uh, four or whatever comes with the x by uh, just divide three sixty or pi. By this x, okay, one eighty or pi. So you can tell what this function represents. Easy one. Let me give you one hint. It has an amplitude of three. Ten seconds, nine seconds. Time's up. I can see many of you have given the right answer. So, oh, good, five right answers. So the graph has an amplitude of three, and it starts from zero. So it must be a sine curve. Because it ends at two pi. So it's a calculator related question. So it's a calculator related question. If you want to select some particular objects from overlapped objects, let's say you have two or three overlapped objects and you want to select a particular object, like if you have a line and a point overlapped each other or a tangent overlapped and you want to select a particular point from there, you can use tab. Always press tab to uh, select a different type of objects, okay, from the overlapped objects. So you have a graph, you have an equation. Find what are the A, B, C. Thank you. 
12 seconds time's up so a3 yeah 50 50 so you can easily find the amplitude okay so as the john sir already told you how you can find the amplitude you just have to see the maximum and the minimum okay then 7 minus minus 1 or 7 minus 1 divided by 2 so 7 minus 1 is 6 6 divided by 2 is 3 so clearly a is 3 okay then b b should be the m b should be the period what is the period okay so it should be 1 okay because after 1 0 to 180 it is pi and pi divided by uh, this 180 is 1 so b should be 1 so uh, by that you can find the value of a b and c or maybe b was 2 because 360 by 180 okay yeah 360 by 180 so period again 360 by 360 by whatever written with pi so 2 pi divided by pi i'm giving you the hint 2 pi divided by whatever written with x Four second times up. So, guys, uh, finding the period is very easy. See, first, uh, good, very good. Five have given the right answer. So, see, first, see what is the trigonometric function written here. It is sine. So, sine has two pi as its period. Now. It is written sine pi x. So whatever written in multiplication with x, you just have to divide with its actual period. So 2 pi divided by pi is 2. As we have seen in the example of tan. So in the case of tan, the actual period of uh, trigonometric function tan, tan is pi. So if you do, uh, 
there it was tan 4x so if you divide pi by 4 you get pi by 4 as a uh, period of that particular function okay so by this you can find the period so first you have to see what is the actual functions period then divided by whatever is in the multiplication of x so next question so few more question are left So here again, what is cot x? Six seconds. Okay, I'm disabling the time. I'm disabling the timer. You just mark the answer right, okay? Anyone else? I'm ending the question now. All right. So till now, Vishud, Vyom, and Didi are on the top. So good. Next question. So it's an easy one, domain and the range of sin x. Easy question. I think in the part of the function, we have seen what are the domain and the range of a particular function. You can draw the graph and you can see what is the range and what is the uh, domain of the function sin x. You can draw on your handles. 10 seconds. Time's up. Oh, so it's the first answer. So range is from minus one to one. Okay, from minus one to one, not from one to minus one. It is written as minus one to one. Next question. In the graph, what is the value of A? A is your amplitude. Time's up. Okay, next question. Sorry, uh, it was mute.
good Time's up. Okay, so was it the last uh, question? Let me just check. Okay, the now the quiz has been ended. Let's see the results. Who are the top runners? Third, DD. Second Vyom, first we should. Congratulations. So uh, now I just want you to show, have you ever seen some interactive geometry while uh, 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 going through the online websites or education.ti.com websites, have you seen any interactive geometry on the TI Inspire CX2? If not, I just want you to show some of the cool features of the TI Inspire CX2, how you can use your TI Inspire handheld and you can make some interactive geometry out of it. So let me just share my screen with you. And I just want you to show some of the interactive geometries that you can make by yourself as well by using the technology. So this is the convex lens image simulation. So I have made this simulation just to demonstrate how you can use this uh, handheld or this software to just make these kind of interactive geometries. Now, this first point, this is my object. Okay. So my object is far away from my 2F, the focus. Okay. It is far away from my focus. And you can see when I uh, move my object towards the lens, how the image of the object behaves okay so this you can also make by yourself i have made this if you want we can have another uh, quick session on this let's say about two hours or two and a half hours how we can make this so if you move your object towards the uh, center of the lens you can see you can see how the ob uh, ob image of the object behaves so first when you move away from the lens, you can see the image is diminishing. Okay, so image is diminishing. Now I'm moving towards my lens. So when you move towards your lens, you can see when you are on the focus of the lens. There is one question. Can the simulation be shared with us, please? Yeah, we can. I can share. Okay. So if you give me your email id i'll share this simulation with you as well so that you can play with it play around with it so now you can see now you can see when i put my image on the focus okay so you can see there is a parallel line you can't get an image or maybe at the infinity it is making so when the object is on the focus simulation says no image okay why because all the lines are parallel all the rays now i am moving more into the lens so you can see as i move the image comes at the same side of the object at the same side of the object you can see the image of this uh, object so again i can move it i can move i can move i can play with play around it and i can see how the simulation works okay even you can increase or decrease the length of the object and you can see how the 
length of the image turns out okay so this is the small simulation of convex lens i have made just to demonstrate how geometry how you can use the geometry application to make these interactive uh, 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 presentations okay so one more thing i have for you to show this is some simply a pulley type question where i can play around it like this is the physics question so i made the simulation i have one object here maybe it a bus or trolley or anything else and one mass uh, attached to it with the pulley so if i move my cart or whatever it is around you can see left right how this mass goes up and down and you can find the you can use the simulation to find the uh, tension in the wire and all and you can just make it more interactive okay so uh, one more thing i can sh i want to show you this piston cylinder how the piston cylinder works so you have seen uh, the diesel engine or petrol engine how it works but you can even uh, uh, use this interactive geometry and show how you can use this or what is the what is the length it moves you can see what is the length it moves it moves the length of a circumference of a circle you can use this simulation to make it more interactive okay so these are the things i have made i have made using purely geometry okay i have made it purely using geometry these things okay but on a graph page but on a graph page then okay so one more thing i have made you made so this is a box kind of thing here you can increase or decrease the length weight and height of a box and you can see how the things are changing how the angles are changing how the lengths are changing what should be its volume you can even find the volume of it how the surface area is changing so you can visualize or you can make it more interactive by finding out some more parameters of this box so you can change all three things the height the weight and the length whatever you want and you can find the area you can find the volume surface area area of a uh, base area of top anything you want then this i have made so i can pull out the part of a trapezium to make it parallelogram and you can i can show you that if you can um, uh, duplicate it and rotate it and join it with the trapezium it becomes a parallelogram so the area of a uh, when you duplicate it and rotate it and join it with this trapezium it becomes a parallelogram and if you uh, if you find the uh, area of this parallelogram and make it half it becomes the area of a trapezium so this is also a wonderful activity that you can explore so i'm working on it i'm making it more interactive by finding some more parameters then i'll share you share it with you as well okay so this is one more activity i have made i have made it to find the uh, relationship between the areas of these three uh, semicircles and compare it with the uh, pythagorean theorem so you can find the area of these three uh, semicircles and you can relate it with the uh, pythagorean theorem that it satisfy the pythagorean theorem as well so be it a, a semicircle or be it any other shape on the three sides of a right angle triangle you can find the or uh, you can uh, compare it with the uh, pythagorean theorem and you can say that yes the area of these three if you add the area of this blue one and red one it should become equal to this blue one oh it, it, purple one sorry that satisfies the pythagorean theorem as well so this is my one more activity where you can just change this 
increase the decrease the length and you can say yes the theorem uh, or the relation uh, is satisfied then one more activity i have made so this is the activity this triangle and you make it as a parallelogram and you can say that yes if you divide the parallelogram or if you join the diagonals or the two opposite vertex of a parallelogram then a uh, parallelogram divides into two equal triangles so area of both the triangles are equal in this case okay so now you can see currently this blue one the area is zero you can see here the area is zero but as as you move it further it becomes 33 and the area of this uh, blue one as well is 33 and you can move anywhere you can move anywhere because base is sticked the area of triangle doesn't change okay so here you can show this activity as well these are the activities that you can make no issues make yourself i'm working continuously on these activities making it more interactive like i've made this three cylinder okay three pistons cylinder function okay so you can you can see how interactive these uh, how powerful is uh, geometry application okay how powerful is the geometry application how you use these geometry application to make these simulations okay so here also one simulation same okay so here also one i was working on this I'm making something out of it let's see what it's become so uh, these are the uh, interactive geometries that you can make by using the geometry application okay so i just wanted to show you these things uh, so that you get fascinated how i'm using the geometry application not only to uh, to solve the questions related to the examinations but to do something that uh, makes you uh, uh, proud and uh, it uh, makes everyone else wow what are these activities how you can use these how you have made this that you can do as well so thank you for joining the session and thank you for uh, being here keep learning keep learning yeah we should i will i will i'll definitely share these simulations okay i'll copy your address email address and i'll share you so thank you all thank you for joining the session keep learning keep doing these uh, interactive activities uh, learning see this calculator is not just to solve the examination questions this calculate this calculator is much more powerful we are going to have a wonderful sessions in coming future on stem technology how we use this calculator in stem so keep uh, uh, so stay with us okay so thank you thank you all for joining thank you